Hey guys, welcome back to the Passing Money Plan. Today's topic, we're going to be talking about what Kirby and I, or what advice, I guess you could say, would we give to new investors? Kirby's got a lot more experience on this than I do, speaking to a lot more people in the investor space, having more experience in investing. But I've got some points on this too, but I'll let you start it off, Kirby. When I when I when I came up with this topic, I was really thinking of you know if people start investing right now today, right now today, this is September, you know, two thousand twenty three. We end up going into the fourth quarter of two thousand twenty three, and if you don't know, September is usually the absolute worst month in the stock market. But we're going to talk about different avenues of investment here. Um. The number one goal, I mean, not the number one goal, the number one thing that I always tell investors, and it's easy to say, but it's the hardest thing to do, is control your emotions. Everybody think, because, you know, we have all the social media platforms that getting rich, getting wealthy is an overnight sensation, meaning that you see, what if you use Mr. Beast, for instance, just using that as an example, they see Mr. Beast and they see all the uh, views that he's getting, all the subscribers that he's getting, all the money he's generating from YouTube. What they don't see is the hundreds of thousands of hours he put into it before he made one penny. All the videos he created, they got no view. All the behind the scene things that he has to do to create it. All the years that it took for him to go from zero to the numbers of millions of subscribers that he have now. Everybody, because it's so quick to access it on the phone or a mobile device or something like that, the only thing people look at is the instant success. When you hear about dropshipping, Alex, I know this is your lane. And then people talk about how, you know, they make, you know, $100,000 a month in revenue, $10,000 a month in revenue. They don't see everything that goes into it beforehand. All the hard work, the sleepless nights and things that go on. And so that's the number one thing. You need to understand what investing is. It's a lot of stuff that you don't see before the money comes into fruition. Let's just use this channel for instance, for example. Like we've been working on this channel, bringing content for going on almost two years. And for the people in the YouTube world, it takes a thousand subscribers to get to, you know, monetization. It took us roughly two years to reach this element. All the videos, all the late night texts coming up with topics, all the going to different locations, doing short videos and hanging out, me making Alex spend money. That was probably his biggest sacrifice right there, <laughs> spending money. But all the time that goes into it. But it's not an overnight thing. It's a lot of hours that's unseen by the public. But because we have, like I said, easy access to it, they think that it's an overnight thing. And the content creators, a lot of them, they don't do it any justice because they make it seem like, it, oh, it just happened as soon as I woke up the next day. No, it, it don't. It's a lot of work that goes into it. But telling the truth doesn't produce a lot of numbers, don't produce a lot of subscribers. The thing is, if you sell somebody a dream that's impossible, you will get more eyes, more views, and things like that. If you lie and sensationalize things, you will get more views and things like that. Another one I want to point out is uh, Michael Zuber and one rental at a time. Those guys on that channel, when it comes to real estate investing, they talk 100% pure facts. I mean, better than the biggest content creators you have in the real estate space, in the investment space. And Michael's been doing this for a number of years. He just hit 50,000 subscribers. When you're telling the truth, people don't want to hear the truth. People want to be sold a dream. People want to be sold a lottery ticket. And that's one thing. So keep your emotion in check and know that this is a long-term journey in any form of investments and not an overnight sensation. Alex, I'll come back with you more, but I'll give you a chance to put your view out there. Yeah, I've said, I made this point before, which was like 
we had spoken about, I think, what someone learning from like a mentor or a teacher or a coach should do. And I had said for them to shut up and listen. And it's funny because I saw a video on Tim Grove. I think we did a reaction to him and he actually said the same thing. Shut up and listen. And my my biggest point I think I would make before people can just open their mind to wanting to learn is get rid of their ego. Because I think that's one of my, um, I guess, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd call it a flaw, but with people that want to learn from me, as soon as I see I, that they have an ego, I just give up. And because I don't, it, it's just a waste of time. And there's so many people that they come to you with questions, but they think that they have all the answers already. And they think that they already know the game. And so when you tell them stuff that isn't sexy or whatever, it's like, they just, they get turned off from it and they don't want to continue to learn. And then they'll question you and they'll argue with you. And if you're in a position to where you're trying to accept advice or learn from someone, you have to get rid of your ego. You have to deprogram everything you've been programmed to learn or believe in the past. And I would say it's easier for younger people. It was easier for me because I had, I think we had met when I was 21. So it was like, I didn't have much programming going on, but you know, for people that have just been sucked into the matrix or whatever, and believe all that stuff, you have to understand that if you want success, just look at the person that's trying to teach you, look at their actions and look at everything they've accomplished and make your judgment based off of that. And if they are in a position where you want to be, then don't say a word, just listen, just absorb all the advice and just go for it. Because I remember when we had started speaking, there was obviously the concern and people in my ear telling me, oh, be careful. What if he's going to scam you and take your money? And I was like, well, he hasn't asked me for a single dollar. And it was just down to the point of, okay, even if he is a scammer, let's say, this guy obviously has real estate. He knows what he's doing in stocks. The worst I could do is I don't have anything. The worst I could do is lose it right now with this guy giving me giving my best shot. And if I lose it, I just go back to starting over again. But if I don't, then I could follow his path and it's real. And I think that's the 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 biggest one I would give is to to new investors and new people that want to get started is just just listen to the people that are giving you the advice that have done it. Yeah. And, and I agree with you. And is, is there scammers out there? 100%. I mean, like, you know, well, you probably knew early on, I don't believe in taking anybody's money. Meaning I will never tell you, Hey, Alex, give me your money so I can invest it for you. I don't believe in it. Right. Because I mean, you can go back to the Bible. I mean, or an old fable. If you give a man a fish, he can eat for a day. But if you teach a man a fish, he can eat forever. I never want to be responsible for your success. I don't even go around. Like when people, you know, email me, text me and say, hey, thanks for giving me that advice about this stock, about this investment. I never say you're welcome. I never say it. I said, don't thank me. You go and did the work because I will give the same advice to anybody. But and I have been giving advice to anybody. Like I, I told you when I first met you, you you're going to get excited about personal finance and building wealth that you go on to tell everybody. But out of a thousand people you tell, you might get one person that might listen. Might get one person that might listen. So me, I'm more excited to see that people actually take the action. I can talk all day, but if nobody takes the action, then my words don't help nobody. So uh, whenever somebody call me and say thanks or text and say thanks, I'd be like, no, you the one that did the work. Because I was going to say what I was going to say anyway. But you took the action. The action is the only thing that makes an investment possible. And that's another point that I want to bring up is taking action. Everybody, and you brought it up, people want to come to you and tell you what they think and all this when it comes to the land of investing. If you knew everything, why are you even here? 
why isn't your situation better? If you got it all figured out, and I agree with you 100% that the younger you are and you get brought into the world of personal finance and learn the right way, the easier, because the older you are, the more you have habits and different things like that, that you have to unbreak, unlearn before you get there. And a lot of people don't want to give up those old habits because they're worried like, well, I'm doing bad right now, but at least I got this while I'm doing bad. What if I can't do nothing? And they think of the catastrophic end of what can happen instead of thinking about the possibilities that can happen if they go do it. You're going to see that a lot. That That's a big thing. Um, so keeping your emotions in check and actually taking action. And, I'll, you know, me, I'm a big proponent of you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Like you always see somebody come with some grand ideal, quick hustle and uh, things like that. Only thing you got to do is find somebody that's already done it. You vet it and make sure they're already doing it and follow the blueprint that they provide on how to do it. Maybe you don't get to the level they're at, but halfway to the level, a quarter of the level to where they're at is 100 times better than where you are today. So the only thing I do is follow a blueprint and take action. But a lot of people are scared to do that because they're scared of, oh, I got $1,000, I'm going to go to zero. $1,000 and zero is the same thing. And instead of thinking, I got a thousand dollars and I can make it ten thousand dollars, a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, those those are all great points. And taking action is the biggest one, I think, too, because it seems like the the majority of people in society lack that ability to, or not the ability, but lack that they have that fear to actually take action, just go ahead and do it. And I've heard it like as far as like and I heard this one time with a huge Amazon seller who does um, Amazon FBA. And he was saying that there's people that know more about Amazon FBA than I do, but they're not they haven't even started. So it's great to know all about it. But he's that, you know, I'm the one that's actually making money on it. And it's a very true point. I mean, and it goes, it, especially I can say this with like real estate. Like I know people that know me and know that I'm buying real estate and they have more sitting capital than I've ever had in one account, but they're not doing anything with it. So it's great that they've got 60 grand or 70 grand in their bank account. But every time, like every time I've reached 30, 40, I've bought a property and then just kept doing that. But people, they like to sit on a cushion and be comfortable rather than taking action. And they think that dreaming of it, oh, because I have this, I can buy a property, but you aren't, you're not doing anything. You're just letting it sit there. And so taking action right. is a huge one because if you don't take action, you're simply not progressing with anything. You're just thinking about it rather than actually doing it. Right. And um, another one I wanted to bring up, and this is probably my last one, just, and again, we're talking about right now, um, the academy, you hear it, you hear it about the bad things right now. We got the UAW strike, you know, Ford, GM, uh, Atlantis, it used to be Chrysler. Um, they're on strike. So people losing jobs, like you see the stock market been taking a hit for the month of September. Like I say, historically, it's been the worst. Um, you hearing about, well, most people still thinking all the house prices are just going to the moon still and it's still 2022 uh, or 2020 to 2022. Um, but in places like Austin, Texas and things like that, even some parts of Florida uh, and other parts that they had elevated, way elevated prices on housing, the pricing is coming down. So people are hearing the fear videos of, oh, this is about to be 2008 all over again. Uh, could that happen? Maybe. But this is a time you should be taking advantage. And what I mean by taking advantage is you need to prepare yourself to take advantage. Like the housing prices can go down, let's say 50%, 70%. The stock market can go down 50%. If you don't have any capital to take advantage of those prices, then you just you just on the sideline just looking at everything happen. 
And then, you know, a couple of years passed and the price, home prices appreciate. And then you sitting here talking about what it could have should have. You have to prepare yourself to take advantage of situations. Like I said, September historically is the worst time in the house market. I mean, in the stock market, excuse me. You have to prepare January through August to collect capital to get discounted prices of stock. And Alex, you, you're in the group with us and you see I'm posting a lot about stuff that I'm buying on discounted prices. I'm not going all in. I'm just, you know, I'm seeing prices uh, drop. So I'm taking advantage of uh, cheaper prices because of September. Um, even with the housing market, you can hear about all the fear mongering and everything that's going on and the housing market is going to crash and all this. But if you not setting up and building capital now to take advantage of those depressed prices, then what are you doing? You can't. You can't take advantage of something if you're not prepared to take advantage of it. Um, give you give you an example. In sports, let's go with football. The football team don't just show up to the game without practicing and preparing for the game. So they practice, they prepare, they condition their body. They do all these things, film study and all that to play the game. People believe that, oh, I'm just going to wait till they hear in the news that we're at an all-time recession and then I'm going to jump in the stock market. Did you, are you been setting capital aside? Are, have you been preparing for this? That's what, I mean, you hear it a lot. Oh yeah, I'm just going to wait for the market to crash and then I'm going to do something. All right. Are you putting your ducks in a row to take advantage of it? Are you studying the markets to know what, uh, market is the best market to buy in. I, you study the market and look historically on which areas come back and appreciate over time. And, you know, do you know what a class A, B, C, D uh, property and neighborhood is? They doing nothing. They wait for the news to tell them and then they figure, oh, now it's going on, then I'll prepare for it. You can't prepare while you win the game. You got to prepare before the game starts. And that's something that People don't do, and like Alex, I'll, we always do it. And it used to be confused when uh, I say stuff early on because I never talk in the present. I'm always talking about something that's going on, and then you would look at me and be like, "Huh, that's not what? What's what, what you talking about? Like, no, oh, that's not going on. I, yeah. I'm talking about what's coming up because right. if it's going on right now and I haven't paid attention to it, I can't just be like, "Oh man, I gotta, I gotta go do this." It's a process to get to there. So I remember, like, the present, I already planned for the present months ago. So now I'm planning for whatever's coming up. Like, for weeks and months, almost a year, I've been telling, hey, get the capital ready for to take advantage of this press prices. Take advantage of people losing their job and they're not going to be able to afford their mortgages. Take advantage of these investors who bought these houses at all-time high and they, they're not able to raise the rent to even get to cash flow either. You have to prepare way before the game start to take advantage when the game start. You can't just say, oh, right now, if the news hit right now and they said we is in a recession, 99% of the people who said that they was going to take advantage of it, they're not going to prepare. Why? Because they out at the, the restaurants, they have, they out at the club, they out at the bars. The reason why I know, because I see them out there. <laughs> I see them out there. They thinking I'm out there blowing the bag, you know, just throwing money around. <laughs> I'm just out here seeing what y'all doing so I can so I can make sure, all right, that's one less person I ain't got to worry about. You know, I'm just counting them out. And that's what's going on because I'd be damned if I'm spending half a paycheck, a whole paycheck going out. I'm spending everything on storing it to take advantage, storing it to take advantage. And that's what people need to understand, especially as investors starting out. Alex, what you got so you can wrap it up? I agree completely, yeah. Kirby, we, well, not we, I call him a prophet because, yeah, he can point out anything. And then once once he brings it up in the class, you'll be like, all right, nine months ago, we talked about this. It's happening today. <laughs> it just calls out. Like, I mean, he can see everything coming up. But, yeah, I mean, you made a great point on when you compared it to sports. You know, they don't, 
not train and then just go into a game. Like you have to be prepared for it. And I think that would go hand in hand with controlling your emotions. You don't want to like if you're going to go and just say, oh, let me just jump in the stocks because the market's down. But you have no experience. You're just you're just going off of emotion. You're just thinking, oh, because everyone else is making money, I want to make money, too, or I want to take advantage. Like you haven't prepared yourself or done the work to be ready for that point. So I think there's a lot of for new investors, it's a lot of accountability. It's a lot of taking action. It's. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry for cutting you off, but you just brought up a great point. You said when they when the stock market going down, they're going to be like, oh, I could jump in now. They're not going to jump in now because everybody's going to be fear mongering. It's going to be over CNN, Fox News saying, oh, my God, the, the world is coming to an end. So they're going to be scared to jump in. But if you've been preparing, studying investors, the Warren Buffets of the world that say take advantage when things are down. Right. And you believe in that philosophy, then those are the people that's going to take advantage. But if you haven't practiced, studied or anything, you're going to be in a boat with everybody else. You're going to be sitting there watching like, oh, I'm not getting in there. I'm not doing that. Like when the housing prices went down, it was only a select few that took advantage of it. I just happen to be one of them, but it's only a select few that took advantage of it. The house right. going down because everybody's sitting there looking, oh, I'm not buying a house. The, I'm going to be underwater. Value is going to go down. They didn't take advantage of the opportunity because they didn't prepare beforehand. But sorry, I just want to bring that up. because no, Those are my points. You know, to new investors, it's a lot of accountability, taking action, removing your ego. You're there to learn as a student, basically. As a new investor, you need to be a student and learn from there and do the work. Do the work that's required. Right. And it's not, it is not easy. Yeah, and it's not easy. It's, no. it's not easy. And it's, it's not how they make it on uh, most social media channels that it's the easiest thing ever. I'm going to go and say your first five years, it's a grind. It's a grind. Now, you make it to the other side of that five years, then it's life is lovely. But that first five years is a grind. I mean, Alex is going through the real estate grind right now. It's not all it's not all roses and bubbles, <laughs> you know. You know, it's it's a grind. It's a it's it's parts two of that that you like, damn, damn. But now as he picks up his fourth unit, right? Yeah, yeah, picked up his fourth unit now, yeah, and then how unit. it's yeah, how he's how he's uh you know mashing it together and and how it how the capital is recycling back to him way faster than it was when he first started out. Now we're starting to see it, but he still got to grind it. You know, keep going, keep going, keep going. But after he's after his fifth year, then he's going to be like, oh, oh, man, what? I got money hiding in the, I got money hiding in the cushion of the couch somewhere. But that that thing happened. But you got to go through the grind before anything else. But I look sorry, you can wrap it up. No, you're good. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.